So, with it being the start of a new year, I have seen a lot of people's most anticipated books of 2023, and it got me thinking, what were people's last anticipated books of last year? And I figured, it's time we bring back Booktube Rewind. <laughs> That's what we've been waiting for! It's what we wanted all along! I think it's been about a year since I've done a Booktube Rewind video. I need more. If you have more ideas for how I can look back in the past on Booktube, theme. So far I've done a Bookshe Rewind vlog where I read the most popular books that people were reading in a certain month and I did a Christmas book haul one. What were people hauling in their Christmas book hauls? So this is going to be our third and I'm going to go back and see what the most anticipated books of last year were and read them. We're going to find out together. <laughs> so that's basically the idea. We'll do some research first and then the rest of the vlog will be me reading the book. So shall we just get into it? I don't think there's anything more to say. Let's go find out what we're gonna be reading in this vlog. Okay, so it's time to start collating the data, watching people's anticipated videos from last year to figure out what books I'm gonna be reading for this vlog. I'm trying to figure out how many people's I wanna set as like my goal. Let's say, oh God, <laughs> for like the size of my, my data sample. Oh, hello Lux, how many should I go for? Let's say a minimum of 22 for 2022, but ideally I would like to aim for about 30. The thing is, in some of these videos, people are gonna be listing like up to 40 books and that takes a long time to input all of that data into a spreadsheet and into a Word document saying who said what. So it takes quite a while. So <laughs> let's aim for a minimum of 22 people, 22 videos, but hopefully 30. Let's see how we go. I'll check in with you when we have our first duplicate. Okay, so I have watched my first three people's videos, which were mine first, because <laughs> I have the most chance of owning those books, or you know, like being excited to read those books that I put on my most anticipated. So I started with mine, and I've watched Mel from Mel Reads and Jenny from This Story Ain't Over. The only book that all three of us have said is one that I have read called Babel by <laughs> Hope I feel like that I might end up being one of the most popular ones. And then there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's twelve that me and one of them said. So me and Mel both said Gallant, Book of Night, The Paris Apartment, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, The House Across the Lake, Seasonal Fears, The It Girl, and Amari and the Great Game. And me and Jenny also said The Daughter of Dr. Moreau, Love on the Brain, Carrie Soto is Back, The Weight of Blood. I think that's it. So they're the ones I've had in common with them so far. I think of that 12 that two of us have said, six of them are ones that I haven't read. I would love The House Across the Lake. I would love Gallant. I'd love Amari and the Great Game. I wouldn't love Book of Night. <laughs> I wouldn't love, a bit nervous about Seasonal Fears. Bit nervous about that one. So I'll come and check in with you. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if I'm gonna get this all done tonight. This may be a multiple day job. A few moments later. I did about 30 people in total and I watched their most anticipated books. Listen, it's not like the whole of Booktube. I'm not claiming to be that. When you did science experiments in high school, you did a sample size. You didn't test everything, you chose a sample size. And that's what I did. I've done a scientific data research. <laughs> There's science and scientific proof. It's biology. So the most popular book mentioned, the most anticipated book of last year, is a book that I've read. It's not really a surprise. Babel Babel by Arif <laughs> Kwang. I've read it. We can't read it for this vlog. There's been so many like challenge videos like I, where I did people's favorite books of last year where like this has come up so many times where I could have read it for so many videos, but we're not reading it in this vlog. Yeah, this was mentioned nine times, which I was surprised. I thought it might be more, but I suppose when you think that's like a third, a third of people mentioning it as one of their most anticipated. Now, I was super interested with the three books that we have ended up reading for this vlog. I wanna know before I tell you 
what you thought would come up. There's a few that I thought would come up that kind of got close. There's a few that I was surprised that got close. I think it's interesting because certain books can kind of grow over the year. There's one book I want to check how many it had before I say stuff. For example, I think of maybe The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead as like a big book that came out last year. Only three people mentioned that. The books we've got here, two of them seven people mentioned and one six people mentioned. There's certain books that kind of grow throughout the year and end up being a big book by the end of the year and there's certain books that kind of a lot of people mention <laughs> like one that we're not gonna be reading but I think got five was uh is it nine lives or nine lies nine lives by Peter Swanson a lot of people mentioned that because Peter Swanson's a fairly well-known author but I don't think a lot of people liked it so it wasn't a book that a lot of people were excited to read so that's kind of what I find interesting about this video we've got two that seven people mentioned this one I think I was surprised to see because this author's previous books, particularly their previously released before this, had been a little bit, <laughs> a little bit dividing of opinion. So the first book we're going to be reading is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. And here are the booktubers who mentioned this one. In this one, we are following a woman named Casey who retreats to her family's lake house in Vermont. And there's across the lake, a couple that she kind of becomes obsessed with. I think she's like looking at them through binoculars, like, and when the wife goes missing, she will insert herself into this problem try and find out exactly what has happened. I want to love this. I do. But one of my main issues with him as an author is that he writes really bad female characters. This will be the chance to redeem yourself, but I am also really kind of hesitant and cautious going into this one just because it does sound really, really simple and basic. The synopsis calls it gasp-worthy, so... We'll see. And you know, yeah, it's Riley Sager. I'll read anything he writes. He's always going to be on my most anticipated list. I don't care. I love him. Yeah, Survive the Night was controversial. So I was surprised that this, I knew this would be like up there, but I thought it might get like four or five, not the seven that it's like front of the pack with. I suppose Riley Sager is just like a go-to well-known author. I would also say Riley does a great job of promoting his books on Instagram. Like he was just great teasers that I feel like get people excited. He's a very good marketer of his stuff. When he announces the book title and he like does like themes and then covers, like whenever all of that stages come out, he does a really good job of like getting people excited. He always gets me excited. So I think that something as simple as that can have a big role in it. Um, I've heard mixed things about this. Some people are giving it five stars, some people are giving it one star. So <laughs> we'll see where we are. I will give you synopses of these books when we read them in the vlog. The other, um, <laughs> the other book on here, Mimi I'm First. Mimi I'm First was number one in the voting. I could not believe it. <laughs> Is she number one in the voting? Or was Mimi like number th was third in the voting? I can't, that quote, it's not quite there. Most of it's there. Anyways, uh, I could not believe this was on there. And seven, the highest number of people mentioning it. Book of Night. <laughs> So in this book, we are following Charlie, who is a low level con artist working as a bartender, trying to distance herself from the powerful and dangerous underground world of shadow trading. Shadows that can be altered for cosmetic and personal purposes. Shadows that can also be manipulated to grant people more power and influence. The past comes back to her and she's like, again, trapped in this circle of like, dastardly deeds like murder and stuff and thieving and stuff like that. Obviously love Holly Black and this is her adult debut. I'm sure is on many of your lists as well and honestly I'm counting down the days. And, and they're saying it's supposed to be like about thieves and like secret societies which yes. I just know that for my enjoyment of what I have read from her the Cruel Prince. I'm extremely curious and intrigued and excited to see what she'll bring and come up with in this new adult fantasy series. Book of Night by Holly Black. Yep, yep. A book that like everyone who has read it has been like, mm -mm. like He did this to me on purpose. He wants to destroy me. Like this didn't even make it into the Goodreads Choice Awards for fantasy because they had too low a rating. Actually, same with Riley Sager. <laughs> These two books, didn't qualify for the Goodreads Choice Awards because they had too low a rating. What am I letting myself in for, you guys? Is this a case of like the most anticipated books end up being shit? I don't know. So all I know about this is that it is Holly Black's adult debut and it didn't slap. Not a lot of people have loved it. So we will see what I think of it when we read it. And the third one that six people mentioned was Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Our main character, Olivia Pryor, has grown up in this school for girls. And the only thing she has left of her past and a semblance of family is her mother's journal, which slowly but surely truly just unravels into madness. At the beginning of this book, she receives a letter inviting her back home to Gallant. But when she arrives, 
arrives there, she quickly realizes that no one was expecting her. She's given two rules to follow. One is to not go outside after dusk, and the other is to stay away from one very specific wall, because on the other side of that wall, there is a magical world which just so happens to call to Olivia. I feel like Beach Rob's just an author I'm probably always gonna give a go. Coming out uh, March 1st, 350 pages. <laughs> and it's pitched as The Secret Garden meets Crimson Peak. So, I'm very excited. Not really a surprise, V.E. Schwab is a favourite author. I'm actually really excited to read this. A lot of people have recommended the audiobook. I've heard mixings about this one as well, but I just, I don't know, I'm feeling good vibes from this. I feel like we could be lucky. So these are the three books we're gonna be reading in this vlog. I think I will read them in that order. So I will start with The House Across the Lake. I've been so excited. It's been one of the books I've wanted to read the most <laughs> for quite a while, because I wanna know what I think of it in comparison to what everyone else thinks of it. So yeah, let's just get into it and see what we think. Okay, hi. <laughs> Everyone say, hey, Miss Wara. Are you looking at them? Hey, Wara. Wara. Hi. <laughs> okay, so hey, I am halfway through, roughly, the house across the lake. I'm currently on reading suits with my patrons and it's helping me get through a lot. Don't start washing indecently, Wara, please. <laughs> Let me tell you about the plot first. So, this is the newest Riley Sager. Miss Riley. <laughs> so we're following this actress who is an alcoholic, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. So it once again is Riley Sager with, oh, don't go. She says, bitch, you're too noisy. It is Riley Sager again with a woman with mental health issues slash addiction. So she's an unreliable narrator, so we can't trust everything she says. Okay. <laughs> I agree. I have had it. And I'm so, you know I'm, what I have? It. It. So that's that's bothering me a bit. Anyways, so she lives, uh, or she's at her family home at this lake where there's about five houses and she can directly see into this one house across the lake that's like all glass and there's this famous couple staying there. We know at the beginning that the wife has gone missing because we had kind of have present day little flash forwards, I guess. And then most of the book is told in the past, then going back and figuring out what happened. And she just basically wants to figure out what's happened to the wife, what is going on with this couple. I'm actually really enjoying it. This one, okay, so Survive the Night, Riley Sager, I feel like was kind of universally bad. <laughs> but this one I've seen like one stars and five stars. Like it's really polarizing. I actually think I might fall into the top end because <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. Here's the thing, with Mr. Riley, <laughs> I never expect like the best books on, on earth, right? You know, also with Riley, <laughs> even when I don't like the book and I think the book is shit, I still have fun. And I can't say that about many authors. Like Riley, you're just going there for shits and giggles. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just fun. It's a fun thriller. He's gonna deliver you a good time. It's gonna be good and we're all gonna have fun. And that's just what I feel like this book is. Like, I don't, I just, like, I'm over. Like, I'm so far removed and I've come to terms with Riley and this pattern for unreliable narrators that he likes to do and like preying on women's mental health, like whatever, okay. Like, I've just accepted it and like, it's not even, <laughs> Like I'm over it, do you know what I mean? Like I just take it as fact that that's gonna happen. So that's not even necessarily really annoying me like it didn't survive the night. I'm really loving just the character interactions, the way that this is written, the few nuggets of information we have, a few things that I'm like, that seem, what's what I'm looking for? Seem normal, seem unmysterious, seem not suspicious, but like there's a little hint of something that leaves me feeling like they are. Something that I'm loving is she is using binoculars to spy on this house, right? <laughs> a little bit of voyeurism. Is that actually voyeurism or is voyeurism sexual? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I read and loved The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, but I heard her pitch it, an event for the guest list, um, long before it came out. The way she pitched it was like, you know, it's a Paris Apartment where you can see into other people's windows. And what I wanted from The Paris Apartment, which I never got, was like seeing things. So like maybe seeing someone chopping something at the sink or whatever, but like you could only see from here up right? So you don't know really what's happening below. And so stuff can be misconstrued. This isn't quite that, like you can see everything that's happening, but because she can't hear what they're saying, she's only seeing the events, like stuff can easily get misconstrued. And I love that. I love seeing and like visually seeing something and knowing that we can take many meanings from that. And there's many possibilities and like, oh, it could go off in so many directions. I love it. 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 It's my fa I think it's a device I really like. A little bit of spying. 
A little bit cheeky spying, never hurt no one. <laughs> so I decided to go and investigate it. I don't know, I, I do like our main character. I feel like she's just bland enough that she could be anyone and I'm actually okay with that in this, in this circumstances. I feel like there's a lot of little things being laid that could end up being a twist at the end. Oh, I'm choking. <laughs> that could end up being a twist at the end. I'm just really enjoying it. And here's the thing, I could get fed up with it by the end and I could rate it low. I also want to recognize that having just been ill, I promise this is the last time I mentioned I've just been ill, but whatever. This is exactly what I wanted to read. And I think I was trying to read other books and it wasn't feeling right. This is like what I've been craving. So it's a little bit of right place, right time. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and carry on with the sprints and I'll see you all when I finished it. Everybody has their job nine to five and getting drained. They settle for second best, scared to risk what the future might bring. What the future might be I hold my breath Waiting for someone to knock at my door Telling me So <laughs> This book goes there Like it does Like I can understand why it is so polarising Because it goes places <laughs> It does things I'm gonna give it four stars. I feel like that's a little bit, you know, I'm not, I'm not adhering to the five star or the one star reviews that I've seen. I loved the direction that this went in, let's just say. I loved the route that we took. I loved the reveals. I loved, I don't know what to say, <laughs> I don't know what to say this without spoiling it, but I loved the places we went that Riley Sager has never gone before. I really appreciated it. I really liked it. I do just feel like some of the final reveals and final stuff at the ending wasn't quite necessary. But other than that, I did enjoy it. And I have to admit something. I was like, I think I was flicking ahead to see where I wanted to get to by a certain night. And you know when you just end up on the one page, you should not end up and you spoil yourself. It happens, right? If you're reading like 100 books a year, you're gonna accidentally spoil yourself for like one or two. The last one this happened to me with was Big Little Lies. <laughs> I was Googling like the movie cast for that. And then there was like a question, you know, Google has those questions where when you Google something, it gives like related questions. And one of the related questions spoiled something for me. And I was like, oh, fuck. I spoiled myself on one of the biggest reveals of this. And I do wonder what my reaction would have been had I not done that. I think I would have loved the reveal, but I wonder if I'd have been like, what? <laughs> I wonder if knowing it helped me prepare myself for it, but I was so excited to then read up to that point and see how it's revealed and see what happens. So I don't think it didn't negatively impact my feelings of the book at all. And I'd also been slightly spoiled for the direction that this goes in, shall we say. And again, I just felt like it made me more excited. I don't know, like here, here's the thing, right? <laughs> Does it have its flaws? Yeah. It's just a fun time. Something fun. Something for the summertime. Something for the girls to, you know, get ready and party. What do you want from me? It's just a fun time. Like, it's just, it's not great American literature. It should be taught in schools. It's not. <laughs> I thought the pacing was great. I thought the reveals were really good. Like, I just thought that I wouldn't have predicted, had I not spoiled myself, <laughs> any of these reveals. I just loved it. I loved the setting of all these houses across this isolated lake. I just felt like it was Ray Sager at his best. Not quite his best, because... You know, I think the last time I lied is that it's best. It was so much fun. And I think that's what I come to Riley Sager for. I do not come here for the best writing or the best characters or the best plot or the best reveals. It's an amalgamation of all those of like, yeah, okay, we're gonna have a fun time that I come here for. He just gives me, it's shits and giggles. You know what I mean? We're here for fun. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how I feel about this. I'm glad I've read it. I'm really excited for his next one. Like I said, he does a great job of selling me with the synopses. So now we're gonna start. I'm really nervous about this one, Book of Night. Look at this lovely like arc that I've got with the black edges. Yeah, <laughs> I can't promise what I'm gonna think of it. I will check in with you when I'm a little bit way through this about what it's about and what my thoughts are because I'm a little bit nervous that I'm not gonna love it. Let's see. 
So I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I, I'm halfway through Book of Night by Holly Black. Um, I'm gonna do, I, I don't know if I can give you the synopsis of this book because what is it? <laughs> Okay, I can tell you that we're following Charlie Hall who spent most of her life doing kind of like magical crime, I guess. I don't really know. And she's left it behind, but then she gets kind of sucked back in, um, back into the murder and the liars and the stealing and what have you, okay? That's all you really need to know. Oh, oh, here we go. The synopsis is gonna tell me what these people are. Glomists, magicians who manipulate shadows to peer into locked rooms, strangle people in their beds, or worse. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I don't understand the magic system of this. I I feel like this book has been simultaneously like, not info dumpy, but like, you know when a <laughs> book is trying to describe a magic system to you and act as if that's like normal, like that's totally normal, but it just sounds absurd. Like that's kind of what this is. Like the glomists who manipulate the shadows and who's the people who like make your shadows do stuff? I don't even know. There's like all this like shadow stuff like make your shadows look cool oh my god it's a new plastic surgery i do not give a don't give a don't give a don't don't um i don't think this is a bad book like i said i'm halfway through i don't think it's bad do i think it's boring yeah i have no inclination to read this i'm just gonna have to like force myself i'm just gonna finish it tonight okay i'm gonna read it over the next couple hours i'm just gonna finish it because i'm actually really excited for gallant but this <sighs> I don't think it's bad. It's just so derivative of the genre. It simultaneously feels like it's drawing a lot of modern trends. You know, it's very Ninth House-esque. Our protagonist is basically Alex Stern 2.0. Whilst also, like I said, in the way that it describes the magic and the world building, feeling very like 2010s fantasy. I don't know. I never read Holly Black before. Like I said, I've never read The Cool Prince or anything. I do own The Cool Prince. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. That's not one of the oldest books on my TBR. But it just feels so like nothing new. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Do you know what I mean? It just feels so boring and been done and has been and just overworked. I don't know. I'm not enjoying it. So that's where I'm currently at with it. <laughs> That's my current opinion. And I listened to, I would say, the first 60 pages just via audio. And that actually usually enhances my reading experience or like my reading comprehension because I listen to it slower than I would if I was reading it physically. So it gives me longer to kind of take in the world, take in the world building, no comprehension. I don't understand what's going on. There's all these words and I don't understand them. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just determined to finish it. And I'd like to make a good start on Gallant tonight because I'm feeling really excited. I, um, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I posted my TBR Cluedo video last night and a lot of people said they really enjoyed it, but just expect it to kind of read like middle grade. I think the protagonist is like 15 maybe and then it reads young. So I'm actually really up for that. And I feel kind of cozy. V Schwab, I'm like intrigued to for a YA middle grade kind of middle of the road from her. So we just got to finish this and then we can get started on that one tonight as well. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Apologies if you can hear Luxie snoring over there. <laughs> snoring quite a lot. Anyways, nope. <laughs> oh, I finished it. I finished it. Listen, I didn't DNF it. I could have done. If I DNF'd it like 180 pages in, like I was debating last night, I would have had no different thoughts than I currently do. Uh, I'm giving it 1.5. 1.5. <laughs> The little, little point five, because <laughs> it's not a one, is because I don't think Holly Jackson is like the worst writer ever. Do you know what I mean? I think the writing is, you know, you can get through it. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I still do not have a single clue uh, as to how this magic system works, and yet I feel like I've had it forced down my throat the entire time. <laughs> like, how is that even possible? I don't understand it. I couldn't tell you how these shadows work, and like, why these shadows? <laughs> like, why I wish folks are gonna shadow magic, and what's going on, and like, the choice. Like, I couldn't tell you anything. I mean the ending, by the time it was the end I was just like reading it for the sake of reading it. I don't think my reading comprehension was great. I didn't think the twists were great. I didn't feel inspired <laughs> to read on. It feels like I read a 500 page book. Like it was a slog to get through. There was no excitement. No, like it just feels so done. Like it, I, I don't know, I feel like I've read a thousand books like this or heard about a thousand books like this. There's nothing exciting about it, nothing inspiring about it. And the thing that I can't get out of my brain is the implied incest. <laughs> I just wasn't expecting that. What is it? I swear, I didn't read Cassandra Clare, but isn't there like implied incest kind of stuff going on in the first two Cassandra Clare books? What is it about these like early YA authors? Yeah, a little bit of like, oh, you think it's incest, but it's not. Or like, <laughs> is it? Like, what? Like, what? what? Like, why? Why are we doing this? I just can't get it in my brain. Like, how are we? Ooh, choices. <laughs> choices are made. I need to say, I won't be continuing on with the series. I can see why everyone didn't love this. It just felt like she had some vibes in mind. I was like, oh, shadows? Thieves work in the shadows? We can do something there. You see what I did? Pun. This whole book's based on a pun uh, without actually... Uh, it, it sh <laughs> so let's go ahead and read the final book of the vlog, Gallant. I'm hoping this is going to save me. I think it'll be a fun, quick read from Miss Victoria, who I, you know, I have some faith in. I'm hoping to get quite a lot of this read tonight. I have got a movie night watching Clueless on my patrons, but other than that, I'm going to try and read as much as I can tonight. So you may see me again. We'll see. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Hello. Um, so it is the morning, I'm just about to do my skincare, hence the headband, <laughs> and do my makeup, and I thought I'd chat to you about Gallant so that I can keep reading the audiobook or listening to the audiobook whilst I get ready. I am just over halfway through Gallant. There's like this section from page 140 to 170 where it's all like journals that read pretty fast, so I just read that and I got up to page 175. Okay, so the plot of this is basically just, we're following Olivia, who has lived in this school for girls for basically a whole life that is very you know cold devoid of love and all she has left of her mother is her journal where her mother slowly descends into madness throughout and she gets a letter inviting her to gallant from her uncle her family home and the last thing that i think the mother's journal says is never go to gallant but she's so desperate to get out of the school for girls that she goes um and it turns out her uncle is now dead so how did he write her the letter that's basically all you need to know going into it and there's a wall she's not allowed to go near a wall but the wall calls to her <laughs> before i got into this people were telling me like approach it as middle grade right approach it not as ya but as middle grade and i don't think that's entirely Entirely true. To explain what I am thinking, <laughs> I need to mention the products of She Who Must Not Be Named, okay? I'm not endorsing this. It's just, I've thought all day, all morning, of how I can explain this without referencing Harry Potter, and I can't. So let's just, we're just gonna mention it as an analogy, okay? Stop while you're, stop while you're ahead. What it reminds me of is the way in which Harry Potter is written, where it kind of, that existed at a time where like the boundaries of children's books and YA didn't really exist. So if something was written, it was kind of written for like every young person who wasn't an adult. So like where a child can read Harry Potter, but also like a young teenager or, you know, anyone really can and enjoy it. Again, I'm not like, you know, don't support her, okay? I'm just using it as an analogy for that time period where the YA genre didn't, wasn't really recognized yet. Cause I feel like this could be read by a child. Like I think if it's a, you know, I think back to what I was reading when I was like eight, I think I could really enjoy this back when I was younger. But I also think like a teenager could really enjoy this. I think it kind of transcends age categories, if that makes sense. It feels like books of old where there wasn't these strict age categories that books had to adhere to and so it could kind of be enjoyed by all. Does that make sense? That's kind of what this feels like. I'm really loving the atmosphere, the magic, the 
what we don't know. It's kind of like haunting. There's all these ghouls. I love the balance of what we do know and what we don't know and what kind of secrets are being kept from us as the reader and Olivia herself. And Olivia's mute as well, so she can only talk through sign language. And um, I just really, I think the representation is being handled well. And it's not like, sometimes I feel like with disability representation, particularly by authors who are not that representation themselves, it can kind of feel like it encompasses all of the person. Like all they are is their disability. Whereas I don't feel like that in this. It's a feature of Olivia's life, but it's not, uh, she's not like, yeah, it's not all she is. She has all these other traits that we get to know throughout the book, which I really appreciate as well. So I'm really enjoying it. It doesn't quite feel like a five star at the moment, although if the ending is great, it, it could get there. It's like a solid four for me at the moment. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And I feel like we haven't really gotten into where, like we still have got a lot of questions unanswered. It feels like we're kind of still at the beginning, but I'm not hating that, you know? So I'm intrigued to see where the second half goes. So I'm gonna go get ready and I'll see you a bit later. I just finished Gallant and I'm gonna give this a four star. I am kind of like, I don't know how to describe this, right? <laughs> I am glad this was a four star. You know, I I love a five star read. You know, we love finding a new favorite book, but I also love a good solid four star. I wouldn't want this to be a five star. Does this make any kind of sense? Like I- I'm, I'm confused because- A good four star reminds me that there's hope for like just enjoying reading and the book doesn't have to be the best book I've ever read it doesn't have to be my favorite book ever but like this was just such a nice enjoyable read does that make sense I feel like you need as much as we love five stars like you need those solid four stars to like keep the balance but yeah I really enjoyed this I thought the writing I feel like V Schwab you know you're gonna get beautiful writing and I just loved the writing in this I loved our main character I really liked Olivia and the journey that she went on throughout the story I just thought it was beautiful a really lovely book you know I'm glad V Schwab has done something like this after Addie LaRue you know Addie LaRue <laughs> was like high concept like you know, detailed, complex, whereas this is a very simple story, but with, you know, this imaginative, ghouls, haunting, whatever. And I don't, I loved it. I think this is a great YA book. I think there's a lot of, you know, lessons about family, about sacrifice, about burdens. I don't know. I think there's a lot of metaphors, a lot that can be read into this. And I just really enjoyed it. But it wasn't a five star, but that's fine with me, you know? I just, I just had a good time. Gallant as a place was very like evocative and just the gothicness. And I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. That's all I have to say to you. <laughs> It didn't have that five star spark, but like I said, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog. We had two four stars. I'm really glad I finally read these. And a 1.5. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs>
<laughs> but I am really glad that I finally got around to all of these 2022 releases that were the most anticipated releases of 2022 according to booktube if you got to the end of the video comment a rose or flower emoji there's a lot about nature and gardens in this so comment that down below if you got to the end let me know what your most anticipated book of last year was and if you have read it yet or if you are still nervously not reading it because <laughs> you don't want to know what like if you're gonna love it or not let me know that down below thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you very soon in another video bye